All right, howdy guys, Nation Nerd here again. So today we have a very cool species we're gonna be looking at, and it's not a reptile, it's one of the inverts, or invertebrates, anything without a backbone. So, what we have is the red velvet ant, or the eastern velvet ant, uh, Dasi Mutilla occidentalis. All right, so please ignore all the different sounds. This is uh, basically just in my backyard. There's a train and lawn mowers and all sorts of other stuff. That I can't control. Anyways, I caught these guys earlier today, and these are once again eastern or red velvet ants. Oop, and one of them's burrowing. Don't burrow. We want to look at you. So, a lot of y'all have probably seen these, but I don't really know what they are. Um, some call them cow killers, or cow ants, or velvet ants. It doesn't really matter. Common names aren't super important as long as you know what you're talking about. So, for all you taxonomists out there, these are in the class Insecta, and they're in the, uh, which is insects. And then the order Hymenoptera, which is wasps, bees, ants. But they're actually in the Vespoidia uh, superfamily, which is wasps, they're not ants. And, ooh, She's going in turbo mode. And then the Motilidae family, which is a uh, worldwide family encompassing all different types of velvet ants. They're kind of freaking out right now. I tried looking at them in the sun to get better lighting, and then my camera overheated, so now we get to look at them in the shade. Anyways, um, I was at the genus level, so they're in the Das Mutilidae genus, and obviously a species Occidentalis say that five times fast and these guys are kind of famous for their uh, bad sting which they do have a very painful sting lasts about half an hour doesn't really cause any lasting damage or require a hospital visit just disinfect the sting site and uh, take some ibuprofen and sit down and wait it out is really all you can do so, these guys are pretty cool because, like I said, they're not actually ants. They're actually a species of wasp. And, uh, in this family as a whole, really, the males are, have wings, and they can't sting. And the females can sting, but they don't have wings. And the reason that the females can sting and the males can't is because it's actually a super-evolved uh, ovipositor, is what their stinger is. And of course, this is used to uh, deposit eggs, and males don't have any need to deposit eggs. Hey. So these guys have a pretty interesting life cycle. Um, the females, after mating with the male, will actually go and find a wasp nest or a bee nest, and they will burrow into it, into the nesting chambers, and they'll actually deposit their eggs on or in some uh, other wasp larvae and then when the eggs hatch they will eat that larvae and go through several different uh, larvae stages themselves and then they'll go into a pupa. A pupa is the final larval stage in some insects and they'll have a hard casing around them and they'll be immobile and they'll actually be pretty vulnerable during this time. Um, this is where they undergo large metamorphosis such as from a caterpillar to a butterfly or from a maggot to a fly and once they come out they have wings and they're super majestic adults most of the time and then after they come out of the pupa they will leave the nest and they will go about living a solitary life these guys you can see just kind of walking around on the ground uh, whenever you find them they can be in the country and rural areas and sometimes even in urban backyards it's not unheard of so really the only thing that you do to avoid getting stung, which these guys aren't aggressive and they're not going to chase after you, look, I can put my finger in here and oh, oh, they're not coming after me. They're, they're not coming after me. They're just trying to move. Look at that. Anyways, um, the best thing to do to avoid getting stung is just to wear shoes and not walk out barefoot. Hey, don't burrow. 
I still want to look at you. There you are. It's actually really easy to see how these guys can be mistaken for ants as they have the restricted waist and no wings. They look honestly a lot like ants. So some myths around these guys apart from just them being ants is uh, one that I was always told as a child is that if you mess with the female, which both of these are as they don't have wings, they will release this like sound that will draw in all the male wasps that fly to come and attack you and save the female. And that's really, there's some truth to it, but it's not what you think. When aggravated or upset, they will actually release this squeaking sound, which let's see if we can see it here. However, the males will not come to save this damsel in distress and even if they did, the males don't sting. Did you hear that squeak? So I had to bring them inside so we could get away from all the other sounds and you could just hear the squeak. Let's play it again real quick. So these guys have a really powerful and potent sting that just causes a lot of pain but has no long lasting consequences. I would show you the effects but I'm not Coyote Peterson and uh, I'm not going to make these out, make any animal out to be uh, scarier than it actually is. So there's really no need for it. Alrighty. So I know it's been a little bit of a shorter video but Hopefully now you have one more species that you know about and you can say some stuff about. And if you ever see these guys, you know, I think they're really cool to watch. And you can watch them just run around. I would not suggest picking them up. And uh, as long as you wear shoes, you should be alright. So once again, this has been The Nature Nerd. Like and subscribe for more. And I hope to see you next time. Leave a comment if you have any questions or what you want to learn about. I'm open to suggestions. Have a good one.